This video was sponsored by Brilliant. As I was talking about the Oppo Find X in my last video, it really hit me just how willing flagship phones have become to trade usability for flashy designs. And it's come to the point where I actually started recommending mid-range phones like the Nokia 7 Plus even to people who could totally afford to buy a flagship smartphone. So this video will be a weird combination of a story behind series episode where I explain why mid-range phones are now kind of better than flagships in my opinion, and also a mini review of the Nokia 7 Plus, just to show you what I really mean. So we generally expect the price and the quality of a device to be directly correlated. If a company has a lineup, the cheapest device is supposed to be the worst one and the most expensive device is expected to be the best one. But I feel like lately this just isn't true anymore. And here's why. We've been saying for years now that the smartphone market is getting kind of stale, right? Big touchscreens on the front, cameras on both sides, hopefully a few ports that you can plug things into somewhere around the edges, and so on. This standard formula works, but is getting kind of boring, so phone makers need to find new ways to stand out, which they do by pushing this formula to its absolute limits. Bezels? Nah, apparently they all tried to get rid of those. Cameras? They fit like three or four of those on a phone. Even motorized ones that just pop right out like this or like this. They also keep making phones slimmer and slimmer and cover them in premium materials with fancy curved edges. In making phones more premium, everything gets pushed to its limits. And here's the thing, this is cool. I'm a geek, I love innovation, I love progress, and this is what drives the industry forward. And I think many companies don't even have much of a choice, because as competition increases, if they don't push themselves to the limit, they just fall behind. But you, the consumer, you do have a choice. And I feel like more and more choosing the super premium flagship with the crazy design is becoming the impractical one. Small bezels are impressive to look at, except you either end up with a silly notch or a motorized thing that makes your device way more fragile and complicated than it has to be. Phones with curved glass everywhere are pretty and certainly feel premium in hand. Except they break and scratch really easily, they are slippery and just slide off of surfaces, so you might just end up putting a case or skin on them, in which case what was the point of glass in the first place? Thin phones are beautiful to look at. Except they often mean you don't have room for headphone jacks or a battery that will comfortably get you through a day. Or if a smartphone maker does squeeze a lot of battery into a thin device, it might just catch fire like Samsung's phones did. Flagship phones happily sacrifice durability, battery life, a headphone jack and many other really practical features for one main reason. Becoming desirable. A few years ago, a flagship phone was simply put a better version of a mid-range phone in pretty much every category. So you could just decide if you wanted to pay the extra or not. But not only has the gap become much smaller over the years, the ever-increasing pursuit of premium flagship designs actually turned this equation around in some cases. Now, depending on which phones you compare and which aspects of a phone you find important, it is very possible that you'll find a mid-range phone that is not just a better deal for your money, like we're used to, but actually a better device for you overall. And I think the Nokia 7 Plus demonstrates this quite perfectly. I actually moved from a flagship phone to this one, and I'm happier overall. It's as if Nokia had spent zero points on being flashy, and instead spent all of their points on becoming practical and useful. And because of this, the Nokia 7 Plus is significantly better in a couple of areas than most flagships out there. It is incredibly durable as proven by Jerry Rig Everything and it even comes with a silicon case just in case. It has all the ports you'd want your phone to have, so Type-C with fast charging and a headphone jack and a fingerprint reader in a normal location because those are apparently a dying breed now as well. Apart from a surprising number of early bugs like music that just stops playing in the background for no reason, which I really hope they fix, software support is impressive too. Pure stock Android that gets regular monthly updates for three full years, which apart from Pixel phones, very few flagships can compete with. And the same goes for battery life. It's phenomenal as this phone has a large 3800 mAh battery that only has to power a mid-range CPU, stock Android, and a full HD screen. I get a comfortable day and a half with heavy use and up to two full days with light use, which is fantastic. <sighs> Living that mid-range life. 
So all of this is excellent, but of course it doesn't outperform flagships in every category. The 6 inch 18 by 9 screen isn't as jaw dropping and bright as what you'd find on flagships. And while I like the lift to wake functionality, bezels are a little thicker than what you're used to as well. A Snapdragon 660 and 4 gigs of RAM also make this phone just a tad slower than flagships despite the efficient stock Android it's powering. But honestly, neither the performance nor the displays are things that bothered me even once in my two weeks with the phone. So, I feel like on a practical level, these slight downgrades just don't really matter. The only two areas that have me looking jealously at flagships are waterproofing, which is sadly missing from the 7 Plus, and the cameras. And don't get me wrong, for a phone that costs 399 euros here in Germany, the cameras are solid. They are what I would call 85% flagship in basically every area. Dynamic range, low light performance, colors, they're all good, just not mind blowing. Two times optical zoom is useful occasionally, though the zoom camera is not stabilized and has a narrower aperture, and 4K video is plenty sharp, but other than the excellent audio quality, just didn't impress me like flagship phones usually do. So for the price, this is great, but since I'm unfairly comparing this to flagships, I feel like this is the Achilles heel of mid-range phones. Having slightly better performance or a slightly brighter screen honestly doesn't meaningfully change how I use my phone, but having an even better camera probably would. So if I had to make the perfect smartphone in 2018, I'd probably start out with a no-nonsense mid-ranger like the 7 Plus, and then add waterproofing and truly flagship-grade cameras. At that point, even if that would mean adding another 50 or 100 euros to the price, I'd see very few reasons to actually upgrade to a flagship phone. So good job, Nokia, and I hope you know what to do with the successor of the 7 Plus one year from now. Now, I've just checked my analytics, and unless YouTube is wrong, most of you are what I'd call university age. So chances are you like learning stuff, like not just passively watching videos like mine, but actually learning stuff by doing stuff. And if that sounds like you, Brilliant is where you should go. They take complex topics like computer science algorithms, machine learning, or computer memory, break them down into manageable parts, and then don't just explain them to you, but actually make you engage with interactive exercises that really drill those concepts into your brain. Unlike college exams that just train you to keep stuff in your short-term memory, Brilliant teaches you real, useful concepts that will stick with you on the long term. So if you're interested in learning math, science, or any other course they offer, my favorite one being the one that explains solar energy, go to brilliant.org slash techautar. The first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off their subscription, and if you use this link, it really helps my channel out as well.